In this lesson we're going to talk about taking a complicated subject in a photograph and think through the ways of simplifying it. And it's usually shape and value. That's what we're going to concentrate on. Finding simple shapes, kind of layers of the landscape, uh, big patterns or layers, and then a big dark and light pattern. Finding the shadow pattern first helps simplify and helps us to rearrange the composition. Now in this lesson we want to talk about simplifying um, photographs that are more complicated or scenes that are more complicated if you're outside. And typically two ways. And first of all the problem with photographs that are, I think are more complicated is that we see detail more than anything else. There's too many little darks and lights. Uh, for instance in this photograph this is in uh, Sedona, Arizona in Oak Creek Canyon and a lot of leaves, small leaves, small rocks, small bright branches, little dark accent branches. The camera picks up all that stuff and really sharpens it. It makes it pop out more. If we were to stand here in front of the real scene, it wouldn't look as sharp. We could simplify things a lot easier, but the camera makes everything as sharp as everywhere else. So back over here in the left corner is just as sharp is right in here, which is where my focal point is going to be. So we want to cut down on the sharpness of all the darks and lights, or the small darks and lights, which is what detail is, and also create a simplification of layers so things go back. So first of all, finding the shadow pattern. If I look at this, I have, you know, you can see the shadowed trees here on the left and the light background. And what I do is I want to find a pattern in here in all these upright trees that are in shadow and create a better pattern maybe what the photograph gives me. As I find this dark pattern in here, redesign the trees maybe to make a better, more interesting shape in the painting other than just copying. The photograph is a place to start and we want to redesign it to make it work a little better. So here's the shadow pattern. Everything that's in the dark and some of the darker lights too that are dark compared to the, the lighter light. So the sky, the background, it's all sunlit compared to the shadow pattern in the middle ground right in here that flows into the shadow pattern in the foreground. And that's what I wanted to do is to flow. In other words, I want a nice abstract pattern starting back here in the middle ground and have it just flow, have the shapes be different sizes, different shape, um, and then it flows into the foreground this way and creates a more pleasing pattern. And they're all somewhat connected, maybe not literally, like right in here, it's not connected, but the viewer's eye makes that jump. Same thing from here to here. Not really definitely connected, but the viewer's eye makes the jump. And that's what you want. I don't want little dots of individual darks, although I do have a few individual darks here. But more powerfully is the strong pattern that's all kind of connected. And this is what we design our painting with, this pattern. For instance, I could decide to leave this trunk out, which I might. That's, you know, that trunk doesn't do anything except just cut off the right side of the, uh, of the canvas. So to leave this large dark out, I think makes it a bit more balanced because this large dark here doesn't do anything for the composition and is pretty uninteresting. So, and takes away from this tree, which I think is, is more of the focal point. So that's the shadow pattern. You can see how it really pulls things together and simplifies it. So this is my drawing for the canvas. This is what I want to draw on the canvas. And you can see why outline doesn't matter much and how outline can kind of get in the way because what matters here is the dark shape and light shape. Now I might use a little line to modify the shape, but I'm going to start by scrubbing in the shape, then maybe wiping out for some light areas and using a little line to modify it or make the shape uh, more definite. Now going back to the original photograph here, I also want to consider layers. This is what I do on the thumbnail with 
pencil and paper is I'm looking for that simple dark pattern that helps simplify things. And also in the thumbnail, how many layers am I going to have? And that helps force things into those layers. In other words, I think I see about four layers here and everything has to fit into those layers. And I want to simplify them. So right off the bat, I have a layer. I'm going to draw through the trees. Layer in here going this way. Then I might have another mountain back in here. Well, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So I have two layers in the background, one and two. Then I have the layer of these middle ground trees, which is kind of the start of the shadow pattern. All that in there is the middle ground. And then the fourth layer is the foreground layer. And that's all in here. So that's you know, one, two, three, four. Everything fits into those four layers. It's kind of like the planes. I'm still thinking in terms of values on the planes, uh, the four planes. But for the shadow pattern, again, all I want to see is that. That simplifies it. Then within this shadow pattern, I can separate the planes. I got the flat plane of the shadow, which is a little lighter than the vertical planes of the shadow. So same thing here, kind of flat, vertical. Got some flat dark areas in here and then vertical dark. So I have uh, at least two value changes within the shadow, probably more because that's a lot of shadow. But I'm simplifying. I'm keeping everything in the shadow pattern. Even after I find this shadow pattern, again, I'm still separating the planes and I might have two or three values within the shadow pattern, all being dark, but still value separations. But even when I change the values, the shadow pattern should still be evident in the painting. It's not real evident in the uh, photograph. Again, when we go to the photograph here, that shadow pattern is not real evident. I can find it, but in my painting, I want it to stick out more, even though the shadow down in here might be lighter than the shadow of the trunk, or the foliage might be a little lighter than the trunk. It's still part of the shadow pattern. So those two things, looking for the shadow pattern and then forcing everything into layers. And the fewer layers, the better. In other words, we're simplifying. So I don't want 16 layers in my painting. I want to keep it as simple as possible and still showing depth. So going on to another photograph here. This is also in Oak Creek Canyon uh, near Sedona. And it's similar, but you can see, again, the upright trees in the shadow start the shadow pattern. That's where it begins. And then I'm going to have the dark, uh, the shadow pattern continue into the reflections in the water, the darker areas in the uh, foreground. You know, technically I could say all the foreground and the upright trees are shadow pattern and the background and sky is the light pattern. But that's a little bit too simplistic. So well, there's my shadow pattern. And what I'm careful to do here in my shadow pattern is to design the shape of these trees. It's not just taking the photograph as it is and copying it exactly. I want shapes in there that work a little better. Because how I, how I uh, pattern these lights within the shadow really creates shapes in the trees. I, as you can see, I changed it quite a bit here to create more interesting shapes. I could probably rework this a little bit too and create more interesting shapes. But this helps simplify. I can draw this on the canvas real easy. And the layers are the sky, mountain there, mountain there, and then the middle ground trees, and then the foreground creek and hillside there. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six layers. And I want to force everything into one of those layers and then find the shadow pattern. Then as I'm painting, I'm separating the planes. Within the shadow here, I've got a lighter slanted, uh, even lighter yet flat. They don't look any different, but they have to be. And darker vertical and lighter sky. And I do that to each layer. I separate the planes, get them the right value. But when I'm doing that, I'm not losing that shadow pattern. That shadow pattern still has to be evident. It's not as strong as this, 
once I start breaking up the planes. But I still want the painting to look more like this than like the photograph. So I hope that makes sense. This one also layer wise here and maybe separate the water shape. But I've got these middle ground trees and then just the background. So here I have one, two, three, four, five shapes, layers of things receding and going back. Um, shadow patterns are a little harder on there, but if I squint a little bit, I can see that shadow pattern, you know, that starts on the shadow side of these trees and works all the way up into the rocks and the water. So um, it's finding the shadow pattern in the trees and having the rocks in the background be dark in the water. Uh, this is also Oak Creek Canyon, and this one's a little more difficult, but once you go through the idea of where the light's coming from. I know the light is coming this way. So I know the shadow is on the right side of all the objects, plus the shadows in the background, the shadow pattern. Then I need to connect these darks, get rid of the little tiny darks and lights and make a big connection. So this is the shadow pattern. And you can see it makes the painting easier to look at. Now I have a lot of little dots and dashes, which I would probably, as I'm drawing it on the canvas, you know, I could fill in a bit more and get rid of some of those. Because the more I can get rid of that detail, uh, the easier it is to read. Now I do want some detail. There is some dark, little darks and lights I want. But when I'm looking for that shadow pattern, simplify it more. I'm trying to just see through the figures. But that's how I want to see that. And that does simplify it. So when I block it in, everything that's in the light here is going to be in the light. Then everything in the shadow is going to be shadow. And nothing left in between. Then I could start breaking it up. But this is what I'd want to draw on the canvas first. So those two things, finding the shadow pattern, separating layers, and keeping it simple.